Now we've seen no shortage of policies announced by the political parties in the recent days and weeks, but how much can we trust what is being said to us? Well, let's talk to our economics editor, Ed Conway, who's been looking into the detail behind the promises. Number crunching, Ed, I presume, for a yeah. lot of this. <laughs> what have you come up with? Well, I mean, it, it's, it's difficult to know where to begin. In some, in some senses, this is not about policy, and your, your two guests were talking about that a moment ago. You know, they're... Um, particularly in the Tory manifesto, we're not seeing massive promises. We're seeing a lot of promises in the Labour manifesto, and they've gone a lot further than they have last time around. But it's really interesting when you actually kind of look at the numbers and try to get a sense of, you know, how much difference is there between the parties, you come to some rather interesting conclusions. And I've got a few... C can I show some charts? Oh, do, Saturday do, do, morning, do. But I've got some charts that we can have a look at that just give you a sense of kind of, you know, what is going on in this election, who is promising more, who is promising to spend more, and this one is, is, is one, actually, I showed on TV just um, a few days ago. Basically, this shows you how much each different party is proposing to increase spending by, uh, by the final year of the Parliament, OK? And there's a pretty clear pattern there, isn't there? I mean, mm. not, only, not only do you have Labour doing an enormous amount, and that, that 80 billion or 80, it's kind of just over 80 billion, that's about double what they were promising last time around. So Labour have gone much further than they have last time around. The Lib Dems ditto, they've gone a lot, much, a lot further than they have last time. But the Tories, look at that Tory bar. Um, that is about as low as you can possibly imagine it. They are not promising to increase current spending much. And what we're talking about here, what these bars show you, basically, is how much they're planning to increase spending on you know, nurses' salaries, on uh, education. It's current spending. So this is not spending on roads or rail, some of the stuff they're talking about. This is spending on the state, on its day-to-day -day functions. And what you can see there is Labour really want to change matters enormously. It's worth mentioning on top of that, they will also want to raise taxes enormously. So they're planning to raise taxes to pay for all of that. But, well, it, and on that sense, I know this was, this was raised in, in one of the forensic interviews the other night, but, but aren't Labour trying to raise these taxes from actually a pretty narrow tax base? Yeah, that's, I mean, the plan is, and they make no bones about this, is they want to raise it from the top 5% of the, the income tax paying population. And... Um, there's, let's say, some raised eyebrows, to put it mildly, within the world of economists about whether you can actually do that. Because I mean, well, that is well, risky to an extent. Isn't it is. It? it is risky because a lot of these people are more mobile, so they can move abroad if, if need be. It's risky because um, you know it might stifle ambition. A lot of people tend to think actually, you know, you want to have tax rates at the top that aren't so high that people just don't bother actually working the extra hour. And when you, fascinatingly, when you looked at the Labour manifesto that in theory, they, you know, if you just take a slide rule and say, OK, everything, everything else equal, if everyone stayed and did their jobs, this is how much you'd raise from this tax. And it was about, it was over 10 billion, I think it was about 11, 12 billion pounds. When they kind of calculated how many people would either leave the country, work less, just basically earn less, as a response to that tax, they halved the potential income from it. So, you know, they're, they are expecting that people are going to respond to this and they're going to respond by not necessarily working as hard. But that is their pitch. Their pitch is to spend a lot more, as you can see there, and to raise taxes a lot more as well. And if we go on to the next chart... So th this shows you current spending, so that's spending on, you know, day-to-day -day running of the government. Let's have a look at the next one. That shows you capital spending. And here, there is a... You know, there's less of a difference here. This is the spending on, you know, whether it's HS2 or whether it's big projects to, to try and sort out roads or broadband. That's where those bars come in. The higher they are, the more you're planning to spend on it. Again, Labour miles ahead of everyone else, but not quite to the same degree as before. And the interesting thing is the Tories planning to spend an awful lot here. And what that basically means is all those promises to eliminate the deficit, to try and, you know, get to zero, they have gone. They've gone completely. And, you know, it's the first election, actually, that the Tories have been promising to do that. And, you know, we, we focus a lot on Labour and they have obviously got a very radical set of policies. They say themselves, you know, this is, this is a radical manifesto. By most measures, it's pretty much the most radical that we've seen since 1983, since Michael Foote or beyond. But actually, the Tories, when you look at what they're doing, whether it's the minimum wage, they're trying to raise the minimum wage, they have caps on energy prices, uh, they want to end austerity, you know, you can debate about how much they're doing it. Actually, the Tory manifesto this time around is not that different from the Ed Miliband Labour manifesto. In economic terms, mm. this may sound crazy, but it's not that different from the Ed Miliband Labour manifesto uh, in 2015. So the Tories have shifted 
to the left in economic terms. I mean, there's lots of other, you know, you can talk about Brexit, you can talk about what they're doing on, on justice or home affairs, but in economic terms, they have shifted to the left. And part of that is illustrated there. They want to spend a lot more money. How much of, of any of these levels of spending, can it be argued, will stimulate the economy? Well, in theory, in theory, spending a lot more on, you know, infrastructure should be productivity enhancing, you know, people... If you're, if you're making the roads better, then people are able to get to work better, you're able to put more trucks on them. If you're making rail better, people can ditto get to work and then you can have more trade. Um, in practice, though, we just, we just don't know. And a lot of this will be paid for out of borrowing. But let's, let's just go on to the next couple of uh, slides because we can see kind of, you know, a bit of historical context. So, uh, you don't mind me showing... I'm, I don't It's Saturday know. morning, but, you know, I've got lots of charts. And, I, you know, it's, and like, it's like a... Moment. It's like an overhead projector session. It's, I love it. That's, that, this is what home is like, uh, yeah. uh, you know, Saturday mornings. Um, so, so this shows you tax revenues as a percent of GDP. And, and just look at, you know, look at where we are now in comparison to the past. Am I allowed to go to the wall and kind of... Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, right, right now, you know, the tour... Right now, we're kind of there. That is a, still about the highest that we've been, you know, since the kind of, you know, the... Really, actually, the 1960s. So you're talking about kind of you know, really high levels of tax in, you know, historical comparison. The Tories are going to raise them a little bit higher. Lib Dems a bit higher than that. And look at Labour. I mean, that's raising to the highest level, basically, since the 1950s. So you're talking here uh, about a very high level of, of, of taxation in comparison to the historical average. And then have a look at the next chart, uh, and we can see spending. And here, government spending, it's nowhere near as high as we saw in the period of financial crisis, of course, because, you know, that was like, you know, banks being bailed out and stuff. But you're, you're getting up with the, with the Tories, you're kind of staying about where you are, which is still higher than any Tory government since Macmillan. But Labour, look at that. They want to change the nature of the state. You know, you're talking about getting public spending up to levels that we have rarely, if ever, seen in this country outside of a financial crisis. And, you know, that was another economic crisis. That was when the IMF intervened uh, in the 1970s. So these... These are big shifts in the nature of the state. And I'm going to come back to this because we've got uh, the next... Have a look at the next chart. This basically, I think, shows you um, the comparison between, you know, where the UK would be under these different uh, types of spending plans uh, compared with other countries around the world. Mm. And actually, here, it doesn't look that radical, does it? So, no. you know, the, the UK there, you can see, it's that, that, that dark blue bar. That's where we are at the moment. The Conservative plans would kind of push, up, push us up a tiny bit. The Lib Dems ditto. But we're still more or less, you know, with, between Cyprus and Israel, below Canada, below Iceland, below Spain. And Labour, their plans, although they look radical in, you know, historical terms, that last chart, Look at where, where we are there. We're between the Netherlands and Portugal and below Germany, you know? So what Labour are proposing is to turn the UK into, you know, a country that is a bit more like the European model, but they're proposing to do it in a very dramatic and quick fashion. And like you asked, you know, they're proposing to do it... All those other countries like Germany, Portugal, they are there because a lot of people within the centre, so not your top 5%, are paying more taxes. And Labour are proposing to do it, just raising taxes from the top. And I think that's, that's an objection I think many economists have. If you're going to get there, which is not an unreasonable assumption, then A, can you do it this quickly? And B, can you do it just raising your taxes on the top 5%? And the answer, I think, for most of them is, is no, or at least a big question mark. OK. Ed, there we must leave it. I have more okay. charts, but, I mean, you I, know, you can bring them we'll back come back later. next time. <laughs>